You're listening to the Higher Calling Podcast. I'm Pete Newsom, and this is your source for all things hiring, staffing, and recruiting. And of course, I'm joined by Ricky Baez. Ricky, how are you today on this beautiful Friday? I can't believe it's July already, Pete. It is July 1st. New month. Wow. Halfway through the year, right? Isn't it? Halfway, I think we're officially halfway now. I think, yeah, I think we are officially halfway and officially a thousand degrees in Central Florida. It, well, it's been that since like March. That is so. true. <laughs> <laughs> What's new? Uh, it's just, I, I just have to complain about it, man. It's, uh, it helps me deal with it. It doesn't make it any cooler, but <laughs> no, it doesn't. Horrible. It doesn't, and, and you know what? But it does make you sound old when we're constantly talking about the weather. <laughs> It well, really does. You're right about that. That is a that's a that's a stage in life that, um, you know, I think I think we're at. So let's move on. Let's pretend that uh, that that's not the case. And that's right. That's not the case. And I'm a, and I'm not yelling at kids to get off my lawn. Hundred exactly. percent correct. Got it. <laughs> um, well, but yeah, what we're going to talk about today is something that is timely and not good, which is the the number of companies that have announced layoffs and hiring freezes and seem to be moving in the wrong direction. We don't have to probably point out to anyone that things aren't going as quite as well in the economy as we'd like for them to. But now it's starting to hit in a different way. And once this starts, you know, it, it, every, a lot of things are tied to, to, um, to what comes next. So specifically what's What's been on my mind and, and what we talked about a little bit before coming on today is the number of companies that are also pulling back job offers. You know, social media really exposes that now where if, if that happens, someone you know, puts those companies on blast on, on Twitter or LinkedIn. And before you know it, everyone knows you can't do that quietly anymore. Have you have you been hearing about that as much as I have? Oh, it, it's Pete. Being in the HR space, you 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 develop a sixth sense. Seriously, it, it's and, and you start smelling it coming, right? Depending on the different actions the organizations takes. But you know, even if you're not in HR, it's you can you can train yourself and 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 do some research so you can start figuring out indicators, even if you're not in HR, to see where the market is going to head. And in any market, any any point in time, there's always peaks and valleys. You just have to know what's the indicators for the valleys, what are the indicators for the peaks, and uh, it's and it's happening now. I mean, it's uh, just uh, a month ago, Carvana, I think they let go of 2,500 people. Not wow. 250, 2,500. Right. So that's a big number. And then Coinbase in the crypto space also did something similar a couple of weeks ago in Sears Home Improvement, which is where I used to work. I, I, I've got some friends that were still there and they got impacted as well. So that avalanche that you and I can see six months down the road right now is a little snowflake and we see what that snowflake is going to become. The question is, what are we gonna do about it? Yeah, I mean, l listen to this list I, I pulled up. You have, uh... You know, Meta, Facebook, we, we everyone's heard of that. That's that was announced a few months ago. Yeah, Uber, Bolt, a lot of a lot of companies that were flying pretty high not too long ago, right? Um, you mentioned Tesla, CVS, CVS. I mean, even in the CVS. health, yes, even wow. in, you know they're they're closely tied to healthcare. I mean, yeah. in a, in a way, but um, yeah, th this is happening, and companies have to manage this uh, not only for the uh, future employees, but their current employees. So I think uh, that's what you know, I want to talk about a little bit is what what companies should do in this situation. And, and the first one is when you have to um, start withdrawing job offers. So being in staffing, that's something that I'm you know, knocking on my desk here. We haven't experienced much. We've been fortunate. We have great yeah. clients. But it's happened um, every once in a while where we have a – candidate who has been who has received a job offer and in between the offer and that person starting the offer has been withdrawn and I, I can tell you you know anytime you have to deliver bad news in our world it's it's it you know it's it's far from fun it's a yeah. tough thing to do yeah. but nothing is worse to me than that where you have to call someone who's potentially resigned from their current employment and and is in between and then say, Hey, we, we have to take it back. And, and being in the middle, like we are is it, I don't know if it makes it better or worse, but 
we can't even really give give a good reason for it. Now, I'll tell you, the few times this happened, we, we certainly consider whether that's a company we'd want to work for going forward who can't yeah. honor that commitment. That's a whole different thing. Yeah. But, um, I mean, what what's your immediate <laughs> thought on that? I mean, what, what the heck are you know, <laughs> what are companies supposed to do in that situation? It's it's awful. It, it's Pete. Let me tell you, I've unfortunately I've done I've had thousands of these conversations, right? And I say unfortunate because it it's anybody who is involved in any kind of separation conversation from an HR perspective, it's always uncomfortable. It's always hard to do, right? Because you've got to take out what happened and then you know focus more on the human side of it, right? Regardless of what happened, so. Um, yes, do I feel bad when we separate for cause? I do, even if it is for cause, because at the end of the day, there's some people behind the scenes that are affected by this that had nothing to do with what the person did. Right. That's bad. What's worse is when you got to have these conversations with people who performed, who did a great job, and through no fault of their own, now we have to separate. Those are the conversations that really hit me deep. But then, Pete, the question comes about from the employees and HR as well, everything. The question comes about is, if we have to separate, why are we pulling? Why are we making offers, and why are we pulling those offers back? If the company, quote unquote, knew this this uh, layoff or these issues were going to come down the pike, and the answer is not as easy as people think, because sometimes organizations are so big and so large. By the time the right hand makes a decision on what to happen, it's probably about a month or so before the left hand uh, gets the information that already interviewed, already uh, uh, made an offer. So there's a lot of, I don't want to call it red tape, but that's what it is. There's a lot of approvals and legal needs to, uh, to uh, take a look at it, and that takes a long time. And that affects the psyche of the employees, like, wow, what is this organization doing? And I think it's it's a good idea for HR people and, and business leaders to take a deep dive as to how long something like that takes. And when you have to communicate and pull um, um, uh, offer letters, it comes with an explanation, right, to let them know why it it's coming to that, right? It certainly should. And uh, I think everyone knows why right now. And And when I think back to my personal experience, this is time number four, and, and it really hasn't happened yet, but reading the tea leaves, like you said, the sixth mm -hmm. sense, you, know, you, you, you have it from an HR standpoint, mm -hmm. I have it from a staffing standpoint as I speak with peers and friends around the country. Uh, being in Florida, we're fortunate, but uh, operating a lot in the tech space, in, in IT staffing, I'm hearing, I'm hearing the talk, I'm hearing the, the stories, and um, the staffing yeah. companies are all around the country are experiencing it, and we are on the front end of this because it's all about hiring. So if something bad is happening, you know, <laughs> hiring is affected first. But for my personal experience, I think of this a lot in times like this. When 9-11 in, in, um, when happened, I was in between resigning from the job, uh, leaving the job that I had, and I was home packing with my, um, my one-year-old when um, – the, the Twin Towers were hit. Mm -hmm. And I was getting ready to move with my little family up to Jacksonville to start a new job working for Avaya. And I I look back now and, and almost in disbelief that they didn't pull my job uh, you know, oh. between b before starting. And I'm forever thankful that didn't happen um, because I, I don't know what would have <laughs> happened next. It would have been <laughs> awful. But... I, I was getting ready to move and take this new job. They could have pulled it back, and, mm. and I, but they didn't. I got there, and within probably the, a couple of months of, of being there, as, as was happening all around the country, were, were significant layoffs at the organization, and, and I don't know how significant they were. It's been a long time, but there were cuts and reductions, and everything changed. And the, now, that, now that I'm thinking about it, the job that I was hired for, wasn't exactly the job I ended up doing, but again, they, they didn't, they didn't get rid of me. Uh, like I guess they thought I was yeah. valuable in some form or fashion. And man, that, that's really scary. It just gives me, you know, some, some anxiety just thinking about how, um, how fortunate I was when, when many others aren't right now. Well, Pete, that one right there, that, that specific example, the whole world saw that happen. Right. So the whole world saw that happen. So it's it's reasonable to expect that some jobs are going to be affected with that. And no way to see it coming. Though, right. In this yeah. in that particular. Well, yeah, after this you see it. Argue. Right. After you after you see it happen, like prior to obviously you can't see that happening because right. that has got nothing to do with the economy. 
but then that happened it affected the economy right so people should 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 be able to see that coming afterwards what's happening now is a little bit more hidden right if you don't know what pulses to check because obviously the pandemic happened, it disrupted the supply chain, it disrupted everything, and we kind of fixed it a little bit. It came back booming, but then the pendulum comes back the other way, swinging, and we have to expect something coming back. But I want to do a quick, a quick comparison, Pete, because again, I think understanding the sizes of the business and how that affects how decisions are made is crucial. I'll give you a great example. So I own my own consulting company, right? Things are good right now. So but I have to forecast six to 12 months down the road. And I can easily I was thinking about bringing on two more people to help me out full time. But then I kind of started seeing some things that are not, you know, turning out the way they should because it's the pendulum swinging hard one way, and it's starting to slow and come back. So I just hired a part time person. I need two full-time people, but since I'm the one hiring, I'm the one, I'm the one doing everything in this organization, I can easily see that and say, I'm not going to hire any more people. Right. Whereas a larger organization, you have a completely different HR department over here, a completely different marketing department over there, and they work in a way that is not independent, well, they are independent of each other, right? So when a decision is made over here, it comes back on this side, there's a lot of lag in between. And unfortunately, you do end up in a situation where offers are being made and these candidates that are about to become uh, uh, employees. They resign from other positions and now the offers pull. And we're just hoping that these folks who resign from the other position, they did it in a graceful manner where they can come back. No, it's 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 uh, well. <laughs> have been replaced. That's another show, right? <laughs> that's that's another show, uh, and and we've talked about that actually. Yes, I think we we have. Not too long ago, about the boomerang yeah. effect, right? Yeah. Um, but but you're 100 percent correct. I think the bigger the company, the harder it is to um, be agile in, mm. in a situation like that. I think that every company wants to be, but just as a matter of practicality, it, when you're large and, and and diverse in your operations and spread out, you, you just can't things don't flow that quickly where you have your, your, you know, you, you can make a decision on the fly. Um, so if you, you know, for a big company, what, what's, what's the message? Yeah. You know, that's, that's what's interesting. So you've had to do this. You're, you're, you're going to get, you're going to get some heat and, and rightfully so. I mean, whether you think you deserve it or not, I mean, you're, you're the one pulling back a job offer. Yeah. Um, that's bad form. Um, what recommendations would you have on how that should be communicated? I think both externally to the candidate uh, mm -hmm. who's who's directly involved, as well as internally, because you, know, you, you have your internal employees probably thinking mm, that's that's not how we should be behaving. <laughs> yeah, right. Like I, I don't feel great about being associated with that. I uh, so. Let me start with the internal communication first, right? Because that's crucial, right? Because if you screw that up, you run the risk of losing more internal people than you plan to, right? So what, what I always advise clients, Pete, I always tell them, be as transparent as you can and communicate, not fairly, what's the word I'm looking for? Communicate openly. consistently. Consistent. Co openly okay. and co obviously there are some things that as a business leader you cannot communicate, right? But be honest about that, right? It, it, it's it's have a town hall. Let them know if you have a town hall every quarter, to to let your entire company know how you're doing financial wise, right? You should be able to to paint start painting a picture early enough so people can kind of see what's happening. And I know some leaders kind of shy away from that because they don't want to give away too much information. But I tend to think on the opposite side of that spectrum, if you communicate consistently, openly, and let them know what is happening, that way independent uh, uh, business, uh, independent department leaders can make a decision. If they have five recs open, maybe we should hold off on that based on what I saw on the town hall. Because if there isn't any town hall, the only thing the business leaders think is, I got to fill these recs, right? So so, what I, sorry, yeah. keep, keep, no, keep going, but it, you bring up such an interesting yeah. thought. So, so, so what I suggest is have regular town hall meetings, communicate effectively, and you've got, as an executive leader, you've got to keep your department leaders in line of what's happening. That way they can make a decision for their departments that will prevent such a big issue later on in case you need to pull back offers. That's that's internally. It's um, it's really interesting to me because I think after working with me, you you realize that I tend to share as much as I can, and 
sometimes it, it's easy to do when things are going well. Yeah. yeah we, we, <laughs> right. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, it, it's when things aren't, and we've been in that situation, yeah. you know, COVID when COVID hit, the numbers were, were went from, from great business was great. The economy was, it was as strong as it could be. And then the rug was pulled out you know, from yeah. under us. And, uh, I think we lost around 35% of our business, which in our world is the number of contractors we had Gosh. in, in the course of about a week and a half. And wow. that, that is, that's not good. That is not good. <laughs> I, mean, I, 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 I wasn't there and my, and my stomach is hurting right now. <laughs> no, you, you weren't there. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> you know, it's even harder when there's so much uncertainty, uh, where what message are we supposed to communicate when we don't even know what, what's going to happen? Um, and I think we we were as transparent as we could be about that. But I, I do always wonder is, if there's if you can't do anything about it, um, you know, what's the point in raising raising the alarm to to where uh, I'm going to give you reason to be fearful. Now go back to work. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, I, I get how that can come across, right? <laughs> yeah, and so I I I I. I, I I tend to mention this a lot in conversations like this, where I, I think everything in these situations is done with good intentions. Yeah. The, you know, the, then you have whether that was a good idea to do is 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 a secondary thought, and then whether the delivery was what <laughs> you wanted it to be. It, it, and so, I know we 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 were very open about that. Um, I I tend to be in any scenario because that's what I would want as an employee, and that's that's mm -hmm. how I've tried to run run the business from day one and even further one of the reasons i started the company in the first place was to be the business that i mm -hmm. wanted but couldn't find as an employee and that meant very open transparent honest communication good or bad but i do see the other side of that coin and realize why companies may want to hold back um when in times where it quite frankly does no good to, to communicate bad information now the the other thing and this is perhaps more relevant to what you just said is that um, when you have a big company, you know, it, you know, so let's say I as a, as, a, as a leader on the at top at the top have a have a message that I think needs to be delivered. I know mm -hmm. the way I want to deliver it. I know the tone. I know, um, you know what the delivery should be, and then I have to pass that down and I pass it down to the next layer. And we're, and I'm talking big companies. You know, mm -hmm. Ford, you know, mm -hmm. laid off or or announced you know layoffs and, and Facebook, these are massive organizations. Yeah. So by the time that met, you know, the telephone game you know, being w what it is, how, how, what's actually being delivered? You know, if you have, I'm going to make this number up, you know, 50 different directors or, or in cases like these organizations, VPs, and then, you know, you go down to hundreds of managers delivering messages to their team. How consistent is that going to be? Well, 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 Pete, they, 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 there's the issue, right? There's the issue because this is where we start playing the we should have done this game, right? We should have done this. We should have done that. But he's, it all comes down to this. The person at the top needs to and, – and this is going to rub some people the wrong way, so put your seatbelt on, folks. The people at the top needs to surround him or herself with people they truly trust, number one. And number two, they're not afraid to give that person bad, uh, not bad info, but just bad news, not bad information, but bad news. Here's why that's important, because if the leader at the top has has a, a, a circle of leaders, a circle of lieutenants that are there for the right reasons, they are going to know how to convey that message from you to the people under them. And if the people under them have the same mentality of surrounding themselves with the same caliber of people, they're going to know what kind of message they're sending down the pike. Now, this is something that it takes years to construct, right? But if we practice that now when things are going well, Right. And start putting those things in place. When it hits the fan, then the machine's already running. Right. Because you, you, you're 100 percent right, Pete. How do you ensure that the message the CEO is supposed to send gets to the front line in the same manner that the CEO intended to communicate it to begin with? And that is if the leaders at each level of that organization has the right leaders in place that know how to translate that message from the leader down to the people below them to put them into action. It's. I know that's not the answer people want to hear, right? Because it's happening now, right? So, well, Ricky, we should have done this a year ago. Cool. Let's start doing it now so when it happens again, because, folks, it will, right? 
it, it's every every season has its peaks and valleys. So let's just get let's learn from these valleys and get ready for the next peak. And when so it happens you're, again, yeah. So you're the guy on top of a um, if a twenty thousand person organization, mm -hmm. right? With you know dozens of VPs and hundreds of directors and managers. <laughs> And you think that strategy is is you think that message is going to be similar as it as it goes down? <laughs> no, you know, no, even, no. Even, I, if, I, even if you <laughs> handpicked all the people, which you wouldn't have, right? You probably wouldn't even at this point. You don't even know most of the managers yeah, or, or, or or directors, right? It's just reality. And I I, I I wonder if that's better than you know the you as as that CEO or president of the company just going out directly and, and putting out a video or. Get it getting on Zoom, but then I, I I see that I mean it's terrifying when you see these these CEOs like there was one recently who went on Zoom and basically delivered a message I can't remember some startup tech no company. no I I rem I remember that vividly because I used that example in class uh it, it was a lending dot com well I don't want to put it out there if it's not true it was an online mortgage company and the There's guy been a few. I think. Well, th this is the one who went, it was right before Christmas, I think, right? He went on and he said that he was crying or something. He let like 900 people go over Zoom. Right. So, yeah, there's right? been a few of those, but that, yeah, the, but, the guy now, crying. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that because I think the public got mad at him for the wrong reason when it comes to that. There's something else that he said in that video because he accused people of stealing time because they were not working efficiently. Oh, that's well, crappy. Well, that's, 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 that's crappy, right? That's, you know, kick, kicking them, kicking <laughs> yeah. them when they're down. That's but, probably not a good idea. Yeah, that is not a good idea to do. But the other thing, pe people were mad at him because he let them go over Zoom. Okay, so that right. Let's so, talk about that. <laughs> let's talk about that yeah, yeah. because I think in a situation like like what we're talking about now, if I have to deliver bad news as as the leader of the organization and and. Granted, with 35 internal employees, you know, Four Corner is, is a very different organization yep. than one with 900. I mean, that goes without saying. But still, I feel it's my responsibility to do it. That's I don't want to pass the buck on something like that. I, I feel Correct. that, you know what, if, if bad news, and in this case, the worst kind of news has to be delivered, yeah, I don't want to be a weasel and pass it on to someone else. <laughs> and yeah. and um, that's the easy out to me, where I'd rather get on get on in this case, Zoom, right? I mean, that's that's what I would want to do. Could, are we going to fly them all in for that discussion? I mean, really? So like, you and I are on the same sheet there, right? Because why, what other way could he have done it other than fly them in where that's not cost-effective at all? You're and beyond <laughs> terrible for all those people who, who that would happen to. I mean, we're laughing because it's that's what we do, but it's it's – it's a terrible situation. So you think, well, am I supposed to send them an email? No, that's callous. That's mm -hmm. impersonal. Um, and I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't, I, the, the, there was a lot, we should go back and do this research perhaps because there were a lot of complaints and a lot of people upset on social media who, who were affected by this and felt it was impersonal. And it may, and maybe if it was just about the, Hey, they kicked us while we were down mm -hmm. and, and insulted us in the process. Okay. That's, then you, this guy. I agree. I agree that yeah, that is not the, the the way to do it. But I gotta say, Pete, there's a lot of people out there that yes, they are really upset that he did it over Zoom. But what's the alternative, right? So I, I I want people to put on that other hat. The alternative is to have individual conversations. That's not efficient, right? The alternative to fly them in. That's kind of cruel, right? I'm going to disrupt your whole life. You got to get a babysitter. You got to do all these things. You can't go to the baseball game. You got to come in so all you can be let go. All of it's bad. Right? Fly all you all in on first class and fly you back on, on coach. <laughs> right? We're that's not, not fly you back at all. In this <laughs> now. You're taking Uber. Here's well, five bucks. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So don't do that. Don't, don't, yeah. don't, um, I don't know what the message would be if we're if we're trying to give good advice to someone else. So other than I know what it is, be sincere and genuine. I mean that that that's the best you can do, and then understand. And this is what I have to accept, and you have to accept as you're going to start hiring employees with your consulting mm -hmm. practice that you're going to be criticized no matter what. You know, that you're you know the coach of of I mean look at Pete Carroll 
to use a sports analogy, he, he wins the Super Bowl. You know, the guy was, a, I think, a national championship coach when he was at US, USC. I think they won at least one I uh, think when so. he was yeah. there. They certainly were dominant. Yeah, he gets his team to the Super Bowl for the second year, calls a play that uh, the, the, the armchair quarterbacks don't like, and suddenly he's terrible, and, and he gets ripped for it. And I'm thinking, it, it's, it's people Carol. don't understand. Yeah, it's, it's – come on. He's a human being who puts on a pant one, his pants one leg at a time. Let the guy make a mistake, right? But I got to tell you, Pete, I have a way where this other guy, the guy who did that, uh, that, that Zoom, could have made could have made it in such a way that he would have come out a winner, right? In comparison, here's what he should have done, Pete. His idea of doing a video, a hundred percent spot on. How that video was delivered was the worst thing he could have done. Right. So I think um, if anybody's thinking about doing something like this here in the next couple of months, which let's be honest, is coming. Right. People get ready. It's coming. The CEO should do a Zoom meeting, but carefully vet it to make sure it comes across sincere. It comes across like, look, here's here's everything we try to do to prevent this from happening. And I've been involved in those conversations of what of the process, because the number one thing business leaders do when it's time to cut is they let go of positions that are opened and not filled, right? right. Affect the people, I mean, uh, affect the people as least as possible. You cut okay. that first, right? Then see what happens and keep cutting, keep cutting. If you explain that to folks, it's an easier pill to swallow. They're still not gonna like it, they're not gonna have a paycheck, right? But later on, right, there's no other better way to send that message other than having a meeting every quarter and nobody's gonna be surprised. Pete, real quick then, my team over at Sears, when when we all got let go, my team was ready. Nobody was shocked. Nobody was surprised because every meeting I always told them, folks, this company does have financial issues. Yeah, and, I, and they knew they worked for Sears. Yeah. <laughs> See, there you go. I mean, they and, have financial issues, year, right? <laughs> in the year two th- in the two thousands. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> well, back when it was yeah, but no, it, it's it's. I always told my team. Always have your resume ready. You never know when that hammer is going to come down. It's not something you want to hear, but if I'm going to be your leader, we're going to work together. I will be really, com- I, I would not be comfortable working with you guys knowing this is a thing and you guys think you're going to be here forever because that's a fallacy. No, that, that's that. Look, if you're being genuine, then yeah. that is advice you should give all the time. Not, not because you're afraid something's going to happen, but because you, ev- everyone will leave for something. Right. It's if, if, if that something is, is, um, uh, uh, an opportunity they can't turn down and we all have that no matter how loyal mm-hmm. we are. It, I do too. If, if the, the kind of thing that I've said for years, although I, this isn't, you know, this isn't going to stand the test of time. I'd probably pick another team right now, but I've always said if Bill Belichick calls and says, Hey, I need you for Sunday, <laughs> I'm in. I'm in that moment. I'm walking out. Absolutely. It doesn't matter what else is going on. And I'm suiting up and I'm, and I'm playing for the Patriots. If, if that call comes, right. Yeah. The call's yeah. not coming. So it's easy for me to say, and I'm at, you know, I, I think there's very few things that would allow me, it would, it would, it would put me in that situation other than some crazy scenario like that. So I'm, I'm fortunate to be there, but if you look around at, most people who haven't yet found that thing that that um, that you'd have to tear them away from, and you should always be looking to some degree, at least with mm-hmm. one eye, maybe not both, but <laughs> keep, keep keep your options open. And I think that's a great point. It's a little off topic for what we're we're doing, and we could we could do a whole show on that as well. Um, so let's bring it back for for a second. Uh, and and really, what we we wanted to I wanted to hear your take on is. You've, you've had to, you have a job freeze. The words come down from the top that, hey, you have to pull any offer that's, that's out there mm. right now. How do you deliver that message, again, externally as well as, as internally to make it sound something less than the awful situation that it is yeah. or, or make people feel, feel as good as, I won't say feel good because no one's going to, but you know, it, less bad. Less, yeah, <laughs> that's the worst way to put it. That's the best way to put it. How do you communicate that less bad? Um, so let me talk about the external folks first, right? Because I've had to do that. And the best way to approach that, Pete, is to rip off that bandage, right? Don't waste any time. Call them in one by one, right? And just say, look, 
we made this offer. I'm sure you have seen that this organization is having some issues financially. Um, because of that, uh, we do have to make a difficult decision to rescind your offer. I know that's going to create an issue for you with your with your um, um, uh, with your family and the previous organization, um, but we do have to rescind this offer at this time. Now, I've had to have that conversation more often than not. Some people understand. Some people are really upset. And I have found out that people that are really upset are the people who didn't leave properly <laughs> in the previous right. job, right? But here's, here's – if you are in a position, Pete, to help these folks out, and here's what I mean. Some companies that are big enough, right, when they do a layoff, they provide transition services, right? That's already built into their budget. If you're in a position where you have transition services available and anybody you speak to, to let them know you're rescinding the offer and they can't go back, why not extend those transition services to them, right? You've disrupted their lives. Uh, it's not on purpose, but because of this happening, they resign from the other position. So if you're in a position to do that, why don't you help them out in that way? A lot of business leaders would think, well, I'm not going to waste my resources on that. I get it. Your brand name is important. Yep. Your brand name is crucial. So I would I much rather have a a candidate who was who is supposed to be an employee, but now they're not. Talk about how well we took care of that process, how we were authentic, how we were compassionate, we were empathetic, and we helped them out versus them just really upset and bashing us on Facebook and social media um, to say how horrible we handled it. Either way, some people are going to be upset, but the empathy and the authenticity needs to flourish like never before in those conversations. Just be straight up and honest and pull that bandage off really quickly. And I think that's as, as good advice as, as you can possibly give on that, even though it's not a great message in, in, in a good scenario. But that is making it as less bad. As, yeah, as it's less impactful. It. People are going to get mad either way. It, it, it's a... Uh, not to say where this happened, but I had to do that one time and the employee, the, the candidate on the way out because he happened to be there collecting some stuff to get ready to start. We had to deliver that message and started destroying the stuff on the way out the office. And we're like, all right, well, he's definitely not coming back. But here's the, yeah, so that, that's 1% right uh most of the people they're like you know what we get it we're upset but we understand we'll figure it out it's the best you could possibly do in that horrible situation so internally right now you have people who see that on social media see how their company yeah, when, when the complaints happen and think oh man i'm working for this organization that you know, is is uncaring is cold oh, is callous whatever you want to say <laughs> and, and and my message there is is always kind of the same which is I, I, no no one want, intends to be bad no one <laughs> intends to do the wrong thing so when i repeat that often as i do in these conversations i do i do really mean it i and i try to put myself in those shoes as as you know, while i can't compare i don't know no unless you've been in unless you've been the leader of a of a very very large organization those considerations are, are certainly different right mm -hmm. uh, um you know when you you're public facing and you're you're a, a, a household name i mean those things add a whole level of complexity i just don't have an experience but i do certainly understand what it's like to to care about your reputation to want to protect it at all cost and and to know that um you want to behave the right way and and i just can't fathom that any leader intends to do things wrong or improperly right. as it relates to other people, yeah. regardless of the delivery and the message and how it comes across, right? So there's a big difference between how, what message is given and how the message is received. Um, it'd be nice if those things were in line, but that's just not the nature of communication between, between people. Um, but internally, I would be as worried about that as anything else to say, hey, look, this isn't this is how we have to act. It's certainly not representative how we'd like to act and not who we are. Mm. But that's easier said than done because the reality is you're, you're taking, you, you've offered someone a job and now you're taking it away. Yeah. That's, that sucks, <laughs> right? No, you can't put, you can't make that, you can't, you make, you can't put 
lipstick on on that pig really <laughs> no you can't and and pete and thank you for saying that piece thank you for because not every leader focuses on the internal folks right because some leaders and and i've seen this not all some leaders you know they take the uh when it comes to that they take the tone of well they should just be happy they didn't get cut right and i guess i understand that that's not what the route i would take so for the leaders that are in a difficult position of rescinding offers, for the leaders that are in a difficult position of letting people go, now more than ever, you've got to take a deep dive into the remaining talent and not forget about them at all. Because here's what happens. If you don't talk to your remaining talent, here's what human beings do. Human beings make up in their own mind what's going to happen, what's going on. And I'm willing to bet 99.9% .9 of the time, it's not going to be positive, fair thought process, right? So right. as a leader, you've got to get ahead of that. You've got to get ahead of that. So as soon as you have to announce something like that, set up a meeting with everybody, you know, that's, that's, that's still there. If they need time to process, give them the time to process because they they're scared they don't know if they're next they don't know if they might be embarrassed to work for an organization that did something like that so they wouldn't be as embarrassed if you explain how the process went it's not a perfect process but people who understand what happened whether they agree with it or not they they would they would be better apt to really accept what happened if somebody explained to them how we got to this point but as that leader, again, that same compassion, the same empathy has to come out to let them know, first of all, thank you, because you had to make two choices to work at this organization. Number one, you decided to come on board. Awesome. Thank you. Number two, you decided to stay on board. That's a decision yeah. you make. And I yeah. thank you for that. And you've got to make them feel welcome, not welcome, appreciated in that process, because if you decided they're not the ones to be cut, that means you decided that's a, 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 a important position in the organization and you don't want that important position to be vacated because of lack of communication. So deep, consistent, authentic communication is key with your internal folks. That's a great, that's a great point, Ricky. As always, you, you really get to the heart of, of what um, matters in, in a situation like this. And it's, it's, it's the way it's really treating others as you'd like to be treated, you know, considering all perspectives and all sides, and then and then doing what you think is best, yeah. right? Just, like, just taking the route you, that you think is best. And listen, man, there's going to be some there's going to be some tough tales, uh, T A L E S, uh, coming in the in the. <laughs> Maybe both. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Like, Why'd you spell them? Oh, got it. I, 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 I because it just. I, well, yeah, our conversations go in strange places. <laughs> it really does, man. Off and off, off camera. Um, but uh, there, there's going to be some sad stories. There's going to be yeah. some um, some rough things happening in the foreseeable future, as 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 we see it. What's fascinating to me is I pay attention to. Um, I try not to more and more lately, but you, when you see um, the you know, our, you know, press conferences happening, you know, uh, from the, um, the the president's office right now, they're still saying the economy's strong as as even this week, <sighs> and I'm thinking, who you're not doing anyone? First of all, no one believes you yeah. in that <laughs> regard, right? I mean, and it, 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 not not to to make it about politics, but like that's not we we should. We should be preparing, yeah. I think, for this. Um, and it's it's irresponsible not to, to some degree, where uh, don't pretend things are rosy when they're not. No no one wins. So you're, you, you, you may feel good in the moment, but um, if I was worried right now about the future of, of our business and the, in the, in the, 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 I will say the foreseeable future, right, what I could, what could see coming – I'd communicate it to a certain degree. Um, I don't want to raise a, a, a alarm unnecessarily, like we talked about earlier, but I, at the very least, I wouldn't say the polar opposite uh, uh, of of what the situation is. I mean, I may say nothing <laughs> if I don't know, <laughs> but things aren't good um, right now in terms of our, the, the near term outlook and. We know this is coming. At least that's my take. Do you do you agree with that? Here's how I take it. Um, what's coming out of the administration right now, they're talking about right this second. 
So right this second, are things better than before? Like maybe this time a year ago, work-wise? They could be, but that's right this second. The mistake that I see that's happening is we're not talking about the future outlook. So if you keep focusing up right, how great things right this second, people are going to start um, putting down their guard, and they should not. They should not put their guards down. They should really pay attention to how far the pendulum is going one way and it's going to come back. So, yeah, it's going okay now, but what's I mean, going to happen six I, months it, down the road? I guess in terms of open jobs, if you just want to look at that, there are more mm -hmm. open jobs now than, than we've had, I think, ever in, in our history. Um, I would argue. Mean, <laughs> yeah, that? Go ahead. What does that mean, though? Right? I, I would argue that's not necessarily a good thing. It, it, and I think too many open jobs is is a very bad thing. Can, work can't get done. You know, you know, things can't get shipped. You know, things can't be made. And so there's a balance, and we're we're too far uh, on the other way in in one way. And it doesn't really matter if the jobs aren't those that will allow people to um, to absorb the the price increases of food and shelter and gas, which you know. So that's when I say no one believes that story because. They have to go to the gas pump. They have to go to the grocery store. They have to uh, pay rent. And if you do all those things, you quickly realize um, that it's not going in your favor right now. Um, it, it, Pete, do you know what's, it, it, it's, I promise this question has to do with this. Do you know what's the best way to not eat hot dogs, to stop eating hot dogs? I know you're like, what are you, what are you asking? What's the best way to stop eating uh, bad foods? Uh, foods that's bad for you, like hot dogs. I don't, I don't know. Ricky. Go, go, <laughs> go to the supermarket right now and see that price tag. Oh my God! I spent nine dollars, nine dollars on a pack of uh, Nathan's hot dogs. Nine dollars for and eight I, hot dogs. For, it was I Un about had a heart attack and I haven't eaten them. Uncooked, <laughs> yeah. in a bun. Uncooked in, no in, in in a package, right? <laughs> So hearing you talk about the economy, hearing you talk about inflation, right? It, it's, it's, I just had to throw that in there because I'm with you. When it, from, from an inflation perspective, things are not good. They're not good at all. All these jobs that are open, and now we can argue whether the jobs are, they pay reasonably or not, because are they open because we don't have enough workers or we do have enough workers, they're just not willing to take the job. Right. That's other different conversations. But then you combine that with how the inflation is right now. So I'm agreeing with you. Things are not as good as the administration is making it out to uh, to uh, to be. But people got to get ready for that. And I think from an administration's perspective, the better message would be, look, yeah, these jobs are open, but we got to buckle down. We got to get ready. Uh, there's a valley coming and we we just need to be ready for that. But as Americans, like everything else, we'll get through it. We yeah. will get through it. But that's what the message I'm getting, right? So I'm with you there. <laughs> so let's let, – yeah. it, is, it is off topic for today. And, yeah. <laughs> and um, we, we've, we, I think we just lost everyone at the hot dogs. But the, the – yeah. <laughs> No, we, we didn't because they're like, that's right, Ricky. They're $9 over at Publix. You're right. And by the way, no one was still listening at this point anyway. So we already, already lost them. But – so, so let, let's do this for, for our next show. Let, let's talk about this idea of job openings and it, people not, quote, wanting to work, which I, I hear often that people say no, that people don't want to work. Well, OK, let, let me just say, yeah, I'm one of them. I, I, I don't want to work. I would love to be on the beach all day. Um, you know, having, having grapes fed to me, if that's, if that's, you know, a, a thing, I, I don't even like grapes, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, uh, probably Doritos in my case. <laughs> there we go. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Um, but that, okay, we work out of necessity and hopefully we can find things to do that we enjoy that we're, that, that gets us excited to do. I'm, I'm a big believer in that. So by all means, if anyone's listening, check out zengig.com, which is mm. going live today on July 1st. That's and exciting. You, you'll see our, our new brand that, that it intends just, uh, that exists to help people find those jobs that, um, that uh, really uh, they can be passionate about. But um, m most of us haven't found that yet, and so we have to work. And so in doing so, we want to uh, earn as much as we can in a fair way in an environment that we, mm -hmm. that we like and uh, that we can grow and learn from, hopefully. But um, companies who have job, jobs 
going unfilled, it's because you're not paying enough. I mean, that is, you're not offering the right pay. You're not offering the right benefits. You're not offering the right work environment, whatever it might be, but that is supply and demand at its finest yeah, and that is working. And so, um, the, the, the challenge is, uh, how do we, how do we reconcile that? So that's, that's, let's talk about that later because, okay. um, uh, that, that gets me get a little fired up sometimes, I think. Oh, next week. That's the topic for next week. Well, I will actually be at the beach <laughs> next week though. So I, I don't, uh. Yeah. Well, well, let's do let's the Doritos. I'll feed myself. Let's still do but, it, right? <laughs> just just show show a maybe. video of a hand coming in feeding your Dorito. Well, there's four bucks. <laughs> Here's another four bucks. Or, or or hot dogs, but I can't afford <laughs> I can't afford to do that for the video. <laughs> and I don't think I'd want that on video anyway. But, but anyway, let's, let's uh, yeah. Let, let's uh, let's say goodbye for now. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. So companies, be honest, be open, be transparent as much as you can be. But but of all, of all else, be genuine and and put yourself in the shoes of uh, that person who's you know has just been put in a bad situation by having that offer rescinded. Try to avoid it at all costs. But when you do, um, you know, try to try to try to be the best you know, version of yourself that you can be in delivering the message and seeing what you can do to make up for it. And um, just just you know, it's that's that's the best I, I can offer during these tough times ahead. And I'll I'll leave uh, I'll leave on on this note. So business leaders, exactly how Pete said it, be genuine and be authentic. More importantly, be human. Be human and let 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 let, let those empathetic skills show. Because even one or two employees are still going to be upset. Don't focus on those. Focus on the other ninety percent that that really work hard for you guys and. Make sure that you do the best you possibly can from a human being perspective, from a leader perspective, to make sure that transition that they have is as smooth as possible. Trust me. Trust me. You will be the topic of conversation at dinner at night. How that conversation goes, is, is, it, it's, it depends entirely on you and how you deliver that message. Perfect. Great way to close. Everyone, thank you for listening. Drive safe. Please rate, review us if you can. We love feedback. Higher calling at fourcornerresources.com. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, look forward to speaking again next time. Ricky, thanks so much. Thank you, sir. Have a good one. If anybody's out there, have a group on for Nathan's Hot Dogs. Please email them to me. Happy 4th, everyone. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>